As a builder and remodeling contractor, I loathe those TV shows that set false expectations for the general public. You know, after watching some of those shows, you'd think you could remodel your kitchen for 15 grand and do it in two weeks. The build show most of the time is on my projects that are two to five million dollar houses and remodels. But on this series of build shows, we're going to be remodeling this 1970s house and we're going to do it on a middle class American budget. I'm going to show you the actual cost that it takes and we're going to show you the right way to do it, not just the lipstick like they show you on TV. We're going to call this series The Real Remodels. Let's go. Well, as you can see, I didn't actually do any of that. <laughs> I ended up building a brand new house for my family and here it is. I've absolutely loved it. We've been in for about two years now. I probably look a little older since that other video was published, frankly. But on this series, we're gonna look back at the build process for my new house. You know, everything basically from the slab up is brand new. And I did a lot of good details in this house that I think would be helpful for you and your builds, whether you build this exact same plan or whether you're building houses for yourself. So. On this series, we're gonna rewalk through the entire process of building this house for my family from the slab all the way to the finish, the Real Rebuild series. Let's get going. The Real Rebuild series is sponsored by James Hardy. All right, so obviously it wasn't actually a <laughs> remodel. Let me give you the backstory here. We're calling this episode the real remodel because at this stage in my life, I really thought this was actually gonna be a remodel and not a new build. Let's get a quick gauge for the condition of the house and then we're gonna backtrack. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more backstory. So let's check this out. So here's the situation, 1970s house that's seen some pretty serious neglect over the last 20 or 30 years. It's in bad shape. Now we're on my street. In fact, I live right around the corner from here and this is a property that I actually own. So we're talking a budget here that's actually my bank account. So, okay, let me pause it there. <laughs> More backstory. So this is on my street. I didn't tell you the full story. It's actually literally across the street from the house that I lived in for almost 15 years. And for years, the neighbor that lived here uh, a single woman, a divorced woman, I said to her, look, if you ever want to move, I'd love to buy that house. And I thought rental, I thought maybe I'd move my family. I didn't know exactly. And obviously you can tell in the video here, I was convinced this was going to be a, a rental house and just a remodel at this stage. But funny enough, I had never, not funny really, kind of sad really, but I'd never set foot in the house prior to actually closing on it. Uh, as I said, for years I told her, hey, if you ever want to sell, one day, uh, four and a half, five years ago now, she said, she knocked on my door and said, actually, I am ready to sell. And so we went back and forth a little bit on a number, and I gave her basically a market rate price for the house uh, as if it was going to be, you know, able to be moved into. And I didn't do any due diligence, really. I didn't walk the house. I didn't see the house. She had a couple of uh, pretty scary dogs. So I never once set foot in the house until after I owned it. Uh, and she rented back for maybe a month, so actually even past the, <laughs> the time that I owned it. And as you can see in this video, as I'm walking through, uh, I mean, the house is just in ridiculous shape. That siding on the back of the house, that T111, which is basically a, a sheathing and siding product that was used all over Texas in the 70s and even into the 80s, rot everywhere. Uh, you know, you saw the mold on the back of the sheetrock or on the front side of the sheetrock in the garage. You saw a brick that had dark colors on it. I knew that I was going to have some problems, but during this episode, as you fast forward on the episode, you'll see that I got together with the architect, uh, Johnson. Kit Johnson. Kit, good to see you, brother. Thank you for coming hey, to join me today. All right. So here's the initial uh, design that Kit came up with. Kit, will you walk us through that? Yeah, I mean, you know, Matt came to me with, you know, slightly stale ranch burger here that needs breathing some new life <laughs> here. But um, so yeah, we wanted to look at what we could do. So just, you know, just immediately from the onset, you come up, you walk up to the house and it's, you know, it just doesn't, it's not very inviting. Yeah. So one of the things that I proposed to Matt was like, first of all, this roof here, is there a way to kind of lower that? It blocks off half the wall up there. And by doing that, could we get some natural light into the bedroom upstairs, a little bit more of you know, a friendly face on the facade out here. So that was one idea to kind of bring that down, that that pitch of that roof a lot lower. In fact, what I was proposing was a flat roof. And then also work over here where you've got this 
That's kind of this chamfered off corner here that at the entry, it's which weird. maybe in the 70s might have been cool, not cool now. So kind of square that off and do something with the entry. Again, just make that more inviting and something that, you know, just brings it, you know, out of the 70s and, you know, here in the next century here. And walk me through your thoughts on the master window change kit from where we are currently to what you were thinking on that first sketch. Yeah, again, a little tired looking, you know, is there a way to do it that's the master bedroom? That's also kind of the, the way you see the house when you're coming from the east. And so is there a way, is there an opportunity there to bring a little bit more attention there, kind of anchor that corner? And so the idea was to work on the windows, you know, pop the roof up a little bit and make that eye catching right there on that corner. So you have that corner element and then you come over here and the entries doing something a little bit more, but overall the whole facade's much more inviting and there's a lot more, you know, architectural doodads coming out that's gonna get your attention more than this laid back, again, quiet 1970s. But tired. Yeah, very tired. So then after Kit presented that to me, I thought about it overnight and I called him back uh, and said, okay, Kit, I love the direction we're going, but there's a couple things that I wanted to change based on just my building experience and my building history. I've built a lot of flat roofs over the years. I've built a lot of flat roofs on expensive houses and I like them, but flat roofs typically are a 20 year roof where you've got to do some maintenance for some change. Plus, anytime you've got a flat roof, you need to be cautious about what's above it. And we've got a big old oak here. And I thought, you know, I don't want to be climbing up on a regular basis to clean out scuppers or drains or other things. So I said, instead of that flat roof kit, what if we pitch that somehow? And also, I felt like this, this house kind of needed some kind of porch. And then lastly, I liked the pop out of the master, but it was almost a little too modern for me. I wanted to kind of tone that down a little bit. I also don't like upturned eaves. I want to see a little bit of pitch. So with just that small amount of direction, Kit went back to the drawing board and we met about a week later and walked me through the new plan on the computer now, Kit. What's what's kind yeah. of the direction we're at now? Yeah, it was good too. You know, that, that first pass had some good ideas, but um, you know, working together, we came up with, uh, I think a much better solution. So okay. here you see that we've, we've kept a pitch on this lower roof, mm -hmm. but brought it down less. The original pitch is five and 12. And so we brought that down to a three and 12. Still enough to shed water. Yep you know, watch out for water. That's right. But it's, it's, it did what I was really hoping to achieve. It, we, by bringing this roof down, we were able to bring, introduce some windows into the bedroom. Again, make the front facade more friendly to the neighborhood. And then, um, and this was really your idea, I don't know if you remember, but we, you said, hey, what about bringing that roof over? And so we did that. We, this lower roof, we brought it over and that made a shallow uh, porch for our entry now. And so that was getting, again, this whole idea of welcoming you know, working on the front facade to allow this. And then by squaring this off too, we also looked at completely, and this gets into messing with the floor plan, <laughs> but we were able to move that front door, make it more gregarious, certainly more accessible. Yeah. You see it from the street, so much more welcoming. Yeah. So the huge improvements. And then again, like you said, we, we toned down even on the, the corner, um, took that down a bit. Still changed the worked with a change in slope in the roof. Yep. And but it still has that dramatic effect, just not quite as you know garish as maybe I had the first go around. We came up with this plan uh, to remodel it, and it seemed like a pretty good plan. It was a I don't know twenty five hundred square foot ish house, something like that. And I was trying to really save where the plumbing was located in the house and all the exterior walls, so the perming would be pretty quick. And it wasn't really until about two weeks later that I started to realize, hmm, is this actually going to work? Uh, by the way, I paid, uh, I think I told you market rate, I think I paid $440,000 for this house, uh, 440000 This is only 10 miles from downtown Austin, Texas. We're in a pretty good neighborhood. Uh, houses during the pandemic were selling for seven, eight hundred thousand. Uh, so... I kind of overpaid a little bit for the lot. I wanted to make sure that this woman was cared for. Uh, this wasn't a, you know, buy this at a super crazy rate uh, kind of a deal. So with that being said, let's fast forward to the next episode where I had Sean Harris come. Now, if you guys have seen any of my videos with Sean in it, Sean is a really smart building science guy. And Sean did a kind of a home performance assessment for me in the house. And this is really when my eyes got awakened to the depth of crappiness of this remodel. Let's hear what Sean had to say about my blower door score. 
to get on this house, Sean, with that in mind. Yeah, so, uh, so 5 ACH50 is code. 27 ACH50 <laughs> is, is this house, uh, which is, is crazy, crazy leaky. It's so real um, bad. Five times I'm still laughing at that. that. So uh, Sean put the blower door in the front door. We came up with a number. And for my builder friends out there, 27.5 ACH50, you know, is just ridiculous. And Sean goes on to tell me that's the equivalent leakage of a seven foot by seven foot hole in the wall somewhere as if it had a seven foot tall by seven foot wide sliding glass door that you really couldn't close. It was that leaky. The fan was absolutely on blazing high and had a hard time even giving us a number to be able to pressurize it because there was that much leakage in the house. I think this is the point in my in my life where I said, what have I gotten into? Like this is this is a bigger remodel than I'm quite ready for. But right after we did the blower door test, this is the part of the video uh, that I think pushed me over the edge. And I, and I wasn't, actually I shouldn't say that. It wasn't until later that I was truly pushed over the edge. But at this phase of, of the uh, kind of inspection, I realized, wow, what am I getting into? Check this out. This is a bit of a crazy revelation here. Okay, so we're heading up into the attic. Let's see what we found. Uh, they really like eating on the, the ductwork. Um, yeah. It's funny, these, these triangle boxes, they're called cheese wedges. Uh, uh -huh. And so it's funny that mice like the, the cheese. Oh, yeah. Um, they also eat into the, the regular insulation, too. They. He's calling it mice, but let's be honest, these are rats. See, this is like, oh, yeah. right here is sort of some damage from some rodents. So uh, There's a cut on that cheese box. What's up with yeah, that? I, some, obviously, some previous person came in to inspect, and they didn't seal it back. This is terrible. Duct leakage. Basically, you've got cold air coming out of these unsealed seams, uh -huh. and that's going to cause all sorts of issues, not to mention humidity. So it's so humid up here right now. Yes, it it's is. It's 80, 90 degree dew points, and all that moisture is going to go straight in here, and then you can get moldy ducts. What's in there? So uh, let's Take find out. One second. You got a flashlight? Yeah. Gosh, the, the rat droppings are everywhere, Sean. Yep. Man, it's disgusting. Okay. They've chewed on this Romex cable over here, too. Yep, so that's uh, not good in here, Matt. You should come check this out. Uh, it's, what are you uh, finding, man? That sounds bad. Yeah, not great. What do you got? So it looks like some uh, some oh, rat droppings gross. and maybe some, some liquid in there. Oh, the man, stains. the rats are running the ducks, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Ugh, look at that duck board. It's stained in there. Yep. That's disgusting. Oh, dude, I've got ducks in the, I've got rats in these ducks, don't I? Really hard to see it but there's a good pause point right there. Literally the rats in the attic were running everywhere, so much so that you could see tunnels through the insulation. Their little nasty feet had made tracks on top of the ductwork, and obviously they'd actually gotten physically into the ductwork. This is when I'm going, oh my gosh, I gotta rip all this out. There's no way I can possibly reuse any of this ductwork. The budget's going up in my mind. I mean, I think I originally said in the very first episode, oh, we're going to do this for like $50,000. Now I'm thinking, there's no way. I mean, we're several hundred thousand dollars at this point. But it's actually the next episode that things get, believe it or not, even more disgusting. Hang on, let me pull that video up. Okay, so the title on this next video, you won't believe how absolutely disgusting this is, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> And yes, it actually lives up to its title. Okay, so we're pulling the kitchen cabinets out here. And on the wait kitchen, for it. I couldn't help point out. Look at this nasty siding on the back. And what would you expect might get in the siding or through the siding when you have that? That's right, rats and mice. We just pulled this one section of countertop out and look yeah. what we're seeing on the dishwasher. They have absolutely chewed up the fiberglass. Why? I have no idea. You see that? That's literally rat teeth chewed the fiberglass on the dishwasher. Idea. Look what we're finding underneath there as well. That is just absolutely disgusting in there. It was. Oh my goodness. Absolutely gracious. disgusting. Look at this. Look at the mold back there. Can you see that? You're going to see it even better when we pull the dishwasher out, but wow, that is absolutely disgusting. We need to go underneath the sink. 
All right, let me summarize for you here because I don't have time to review the entire video with you, but we pulled the dishwasher out. We realized that rats were literally living inside the dishwasher. There was a rat's nest inside the dishwasher and the poor homeowner's dishes were still in. I don't know when she realized, maybe when she ran the dishwasher once and it flooded the floor because there's holes everywhere, but she literally still had dishes and Tupperware and spoons in the dishwasher, rats everywhere. I found a rat carcass underneath one of these cabinets. As we started taking down the drywall from the ceiling in the kitchen, we realized that, I mean, I was thankful I had goggles on. Rat poop is literally raining down on us, like showering us and everything around us. Probably the one of the most disgusting things I've ever done in my life. And I've been around some crazy stuff before under construction. This house was riddled with rats everywhere. So if you fast forward this video, uh, I kind of carefully took apart the house. We found rat poop everywhere. And I'm thinking, all right, now now we've we've kind of gotten to this stage where it's Back just the root. where it's just the bones of construction. What do I do? Like I'm still moving forward on a remodel this time. But I'm thinking, am I gonna power wash the house? I mean, even like the two by rafters, or pardon me, the two by trusses upstairs had just poop everywhere on the two on the top of the two by four. I was thinking I'm gonna have to go into my house under construction and power wash it to get it back to some state of cleanliness. And ultimately what happened was, and let's see if I can fast forward to uh, to this one. <laughs> Whew, it's chilly. It's like I 45. thought that I was gonna do what they call a chainsaw retrofit, meaning uh, you can see the house at this stage now, all the cladding's on the outside gone, all the sheetrock's gone on the inside, all the wiring, all the ducts, I basically have a what they call down to the studs remodel and i brought my framer in uh bill wood and his crew and i'm thinking all right we're gonna we're gonna chainsaw retrofit this we're gonna cut off the overhangs then we're gonna be able to re-insulate on the outside uh and turn this into you know we'll build house and we'll probably have to take some of the trusses down and for in favor of putting some rafters up so i've got some space for mechanicals on the attic but you can see that the house is in the in the bone stage here. And it was at that stage that Bill turned to me and said uh, the pivotal thing <laughs> that totally changed the course of construction. And he said, Matt, what are you doing? This is disgusting. This house is garbage. We've got no straight wall in the entire house. We have two by fours that have rat poop everywhere and, and soaked urine in them. You're Matt Reisinger. What are you doing? You don't half a anything. And yet you're trying to remodel this? You want my guys to straighten these walls? This is stupid. We need to tear this thing down and start fresh. And I thought about it for about five minutes and I said, yeah, yeah, you're right. We need to tear it down. So here I carefully picked apart the entire house, took every sheet of drywall down, had my kids help me, had friends and neighbors. And ultimately I should have just knocked the house down with a bulldozer is really what should have happened. It, it was a little bit... Um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A little embarrassing, frankly, for me had to have been in construction almost 30 years. I've helped people through hundreds of remodels. And yet here I am at my own house and I'm blinded by the facts. I, I should have known going straight in that this was not going to be the real remodel. It was going to be the real rebuild, but it took me a while to get there. And, and it was Bill saying, what are you doing? This is totally half aing it that I finally had that light bulb go off on my head and said, yeah, you're right. I can't do this anymore. This is ridiculous. So with that being in mind, I brought Kit, the architect back. I put a pause on construction. I'd already had a remodel permit at this point. Uh, we knew that we were reusing the slab. We were reframing the building. So I said, all right, Kit, I'm going to redo this. We're going to take it down to the slab and we're going to build a new house. I don't think this is going to be a rental anymore. Uh, all of my kind of former plans went out the window and I said, you know what, this is going to be my house. How cool would it be for me to have young kids? My kids weren't even teenagers at that point, or I guess I had my oldest daughter was a teenager. Maybe at this point she was 13. Uh, but how cool would it be for them to see dad build a house for them right across the street and for me to build a, a you know, a house that I've dreamed about for, for decades, right here. I've been a builder for almost 30 years. I'd never built a house for my family. So we went back, we re-looked at the plans. I said, all right, if we're, if we're going to do this, we should do it right. Let's not 
uh, reuse all the plumbing locations because we really kind of had a wonky floor plan at this point uh, trying to reuse exactly where the toilet locations were and shower locations. I didn't want to jackhammer uh, anything up. That went out the window. We said, all right, let's 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 totally relook at these plans. Let's also add a little bit of extra square footage to the upstairs. So we went from like 24, 2,500 square feet to about 27 and change. I want to say the house is 2750, something like that. And we went and all we had to do was revise the permit. It was pretty straightforward. Again, we still reused the slab. We didn't change anything. Same footprint. The house really pretty much looked the same with some minor changes, making that second floor elevation bigger. We also added the pop out in the stairs at that point, which we didn't have in the previous plan. But that allowed me to have a fresh slab, a fresh set of plans. We brought the plumbers in. Uh, we jackhammered, jackhammered the plumbing. I brought a brand new PEX line in from the street. I uh, used one inch Upinor PEX to have a brand new fresh line. Uh, I redid my sewer line to the street and I redid a, all the under slab plumbing minus maybe one or two drain locations on the house. So at this point, I'm thinking, all right, I got a brand new house and now I can really do it right. It was that mindset shift for me. And that's really where we went from the real remodel to the real rebuild. Still a rebuild, still an existing slab. I didn't really change the slab, but here's where we're getting to a new house build. As we get into episode two, we're gonna jump into framing, uh, exterior insulation. We're really gonna show you the details. So this episode really was just to set you up with, here's how we got to the situation. Here's crazy Matt who thought he could remodel it and then realized, no, that, that was totally not happening. And we're going to go from really one of the worst houses in the neighborhood to one of the best houses in the neighborhood and, and really one of the best houses built uh, in Texas in, in that year that I finished this house. You know, I think this episode really summarizes a phrase that I've started to use a lot, which is no better, build better. We went from a real remodel to a real rebuild. Let's get going.